Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to be showing the C Manager and Menu System of the Impulse Framework. If you don't know what it is, it's a bare bones C Sharp framework for speeding up prototyping in Unity. It allows you to, or it will allow you, it's not actually complete yet, uh, to basically drop in a bare bones framework and uh, use that as a basis for your next project. It'll handle things out of the box uh, that are easily customizable, like inputs. It'll include a basic game manager and C manager. Uh, as well as specific uh, device inputs like keyboard and mouse inputs that you can customize. This way, if you decide that your prototype is something that you want to preserve further, then you can simply uh, you can simply uh, optimize your prototype code instead of optimizing the entire project because the the inputs and the scene manager and the game manager will all already be optimized by the framework. Will allow you to easily scale the project. Uh, whereas most prototypes uh, aren't built with frameworks and instead have horribly unoptimized code all around. And when they decide to scale, they realize they have to go back and rebuild everything or re-optimize everything. Uh, using this framework will not only allow you to build your prototype faster because it includes a lot of uh, non-gameplay elements out of the box, like scene managing and input and uh, like extending model behavior and like object managing. Um, but also allow you to scale faster if you decide it's something you want to pursue. So I'm going to go ahead and show how it works. So uh, you want to have your splash scene um, in as uh, scene zero, and you can read in the Unity manual why that is. Um, and all your other game scenes are going to need to be scene one or higher. Um, so with the splash scene, I'll go ahead and load that. Customizing splash scene is uh, pretty simple. So the scene manager um, it's pretty powerful. It includes a progressive level loading system. So if if normally you would, uh, or if you if your game has levels, like say like a level one, level two, level three, and they're not specified as scene one, scene two, and scene three in the build settings, then what would happen is you'd either have to refer to each of those levels by name in order to load them normally, or you'd have to set them as scene one, scene two, and scene three, which may not be the most intuitive or most uh, optimal way to order your scenes. Scene Manager includes uh, an array in the inspector where you can specify uh, a series of progressive levels. And then this way the Scene Manager knows, uh, it has a function called load, like, load next level um, that will load the next level in this array, uh, saving you from actually having to call each scene individually by string name or calling them by number based on their build settings. And this is very artist friendly. Uh, if, it makes it a lot easier if you want to test progressive level loading or levels uh, progressively, I should say. So um, you'll notice there's things like duration interpolation and a black overlay. Black overlay here is uh, used for fading in and fading out. It's one of the things that this scene manager compared to a lot of basic scene managers uh, actually handles for you. The duration is the duration in uh, in which the fading will occur. Interpolation is what could what sort of curve that the fading uh, will use for fading in and fading out. And then splash object is a prefab with this is uh, basically a canvas uh, element, a UI canvas root with the UI uh, image. Here in the image is where you'll specify what you want to show uh, in the splash scene. So right now I'm using corporate logo. And you specify that in the splash object. So you just drag the prefab in here, uh, and then it will fade in the image you have set. Go ahead and show how that works now. So here you have the, the splash image fades in, it's corporate logo, then fades out, and the main menu fades in. If you don't want to actually have this fade in effect, just set it to none. Uh, and if you, if you don't want to have any fade at all, set duration to zero, and the main menu will load. If you do want some sort of fade in effect, go ahead and set it to one or two, and then you will have the main menu load in or just fade in. So that's the splash screen and the scene manager. Your scene manager does need to be in the, the first scene in your game, the, the splash scene, scene zero, uh, because it's persistent. Um, almost every uh, scene in your game is going to want to be able to have the ability to switch to other scenes in your game. And by having a scene manager that can handle all of that, as well as no, um, 
what scenes have previously been visited or if you want to have progressive scene loading like I've shown here, uh, then it's good to have a prefab that just persists throughout the entire game and handles scene loading. We'll go ahead and show how the menu system works here. So the menu is contained in a single scene and the reason why is because you might have elements that are uh, common to all, single, all the screens in your menu. And if you were to split your menu up into different scenes, then what you have to do is reload every single one of these uh, images or containing them, all of them within a single scene and then being able to switch between menu screens, such as the main screen and the option screen without having to load a different scene. We can conserve system resources because we're not just reloading all the same assets. So basically the way the menu system works is the menu system is a root UI transform or U UI uh, canvas, I should say, the menu manager script. Uh, the script, the only thing you actually want to set is what the first screen is going to be. So in this case, it's the main screen. And this is uh, this is the first thing that you want users to see. You'll specify that here. The active screen is just shown in the inspector so that you can easily see uh, what screen, according to the script, is currently active. Uh, and so if there's discrepancy there, you can probably debug it quite quickly. Each screen is an empty game object with the menu screen script attached and it's a container for holding actual UI elements such as a uh, UI text for the title or UI buttons. Um, I'll explain some of the UGUI uh, on-click functionality here. So you want to load a scene like the play button will actually load a scene not another menu screen so it actually switch to a different scene entirely. You have load scene which will just load a, a scene and you have load scene fade in, which actually fade out the main menu and then fade in the next scene. So depending on what your game uh, needs are, if you want your game scene to fade in, you would use load scene fade in. If you want your game scene to just, or if you want your game to just automatically load the first game level, you just use load scene instead. If you don't want the fade in, options button is an example of uh, going to another menu screen. And here you you have similar functions. You have change menu, which will load another menu screen without the uh, fade in effect or fade out effect. And then you have change menu and fade, which will do that with the fade in and fade out effects. Um, and like the, uh, like the menu system where you specify a menu screen type for the first screen, uh, you need to specify a, a type of menu screen for the, the next screen to load. And quit is pretty much just a, a standard quit request application uh, quit. And you can see the same thing in options. If you go to the back button, you'll see it's a change menu and fade that will fade out the options and fade in the main menu. And again, this is just a, like a bare bones sort of main menu you can build upon. It's important that your main menu screens themselves are set inactive because the menu system will actually set them active as needed. And of course, elements that are common to all screens should always be set to active. Uh, the menu system currently will default to the splash screen if you're loading from the menu scene itself. This is because the splash screen is where the scene manager uh, exists. And you want a scene manager to persist throughout the entire game. And you can customize this later so that if the scene manager doesn't exist, it will just initialize the scene manager prefab. But currently, the menu system just defaults. Uh, it assumes that the scene, the splash scene is going to be scene zero and main menu is going to be scene one. And so it'll default to the splash screen first. So here you have the main uh, menu. I don't have um, a scene to, to really show you the play functionality. But you're going to have to assume that it works. It's just basic scene loading. Options will load the option screen as you can see. It becomes active, it fades in, fading back, become inactive, the main menu become active. So that's how the main menu system works, how the scene manager works. Um, I might do another video later showing the actual scene manager like loading functionality, like with the progressive loading. Um, but it's pretty intuitive, so you should be able to understand it uh, just by looking at the script, calling the function. Um, the main menu is easily extendable. You just you can just clone or like create another game object and then put UI elements into it, uh, and then just wire them up. Uh, with on-click events. So that's the scene manager menu system. I'll create another video later once we have other elements added, um, like the music manager and the sound manager 
hopefully by then, hopefully in March when UD5 is actually released, uh, you'll be able to use this framework and uh, use it as a basis for building your next prototype. So stay tuned.